on today's episode. This charger, of course, needs no introduction. It's the classic IMAX B6, and if you've been in the hobby for any length of time, you would almost certainly have one of these. You know when the product is getting popular because there are numerous clones that, that appear, some working better than others. This guy at least appears to be the genuine article as it has the holographic sticker. This has worked very well for me for a number of years, but there are some functions that it doesn't do. It can't support the new high voltage batteries which I'm interested in checking out. Also, for example, it doesn't measure internal resistance, which is something of interest to me. However, from the same stable, there is now a new kid on the block. Let me introduce you to the new SkyRC E680. Please take serious note of the warning on the screen there and not to use the charger unsupervised. You can see in another video of mine the consequences of uh, what happens when a lithium goes rogue. The charger can be powered either directly from the mains or from a DC power input 11 to 18 volts. This also doubles up as a DC power output which can be very useful. On the side here we can see the connection for the balance board and the main positive and negative outputs. Unlike its predecessor it has a built-in fan. There is a connector for an external temperature sensor which you can strap onto the battery which will ensure that if something should go wrong and the battery overheats that the charger will disconnect. An important safety feature there. Let's now get it connected up and I'll take you through the various menu options. It's reassuring to see when you connect the supplied power cable and you can choose the plug for your particular region that it comes up with a menu identical to the old IMAX B6 so this won't be a mystery to most people. In which case I'm not going to spend time just going through the basic functions I'm going to point out the differences and advantages of this particular unit over the previous version. If you're just starting out and need to know the, the basics, um, there's a very good printed instruction manual supplied that will take you through all the stuff that you need to know. It's a worthwhile read if you're just starting out, as there are many uh, warning and safety notices that uh, you should take heed of. The unit is supplied with a balance board and connector, also with this DC lead that you could power the unit from a, a battery. The only charging lead supplied is this with the traditional XT60 connector. There are various options that you can buy from SkyRC, including the temperature sensor, which I'm going to show you, a special cable for the DJI Mavic batteries, and various others. Apart from the DJI, my personal preference is one of these all-in-one charging leads satisfy 99% of your needs. Just remember when this is connected to, to a battery we have these two flying leads and obviously you don't want those touching each other so I just clip the black one to the, to the red one to stop anything untoward happening. With that out of the way I'm going to connect this temperature sensing cable which again is an optional extra and we'll check out the temperature cutoff. Just before we move on, an important discovery. Just the simplest of setups, uh, LiPo charge here at 1C, 1.6 amps. When I went to start the unit, confirm. An error, no power distributed. What on earth does that mean? If we look in the fine manual, RTFM, read the fine manual. In the error messages, no power distributed says no power allocate to the charger. As I've said, this has the ability to output voltage and you can set the power. Now, I swear I haven't touched this before. If we go into the system settings, we can see that the DC supply output is set to a full 80 watts, which leaves nothing for the charger. I have did a, a factory reset and this is not standard, a factory reset will switch the DC power off and allocate the 80 watts directly to the charger. So let's do that. So now the DC supply is off and all the 80 watts is supplied to the charger. Go back to our battery charge. 
and now all is good. Just be aware of that. Now we can move on to our temperature cutoff test. This isn't anything new. As I mentioned before, this feature was available back on the original IMAX B6. But for me, it's an important safety feature. I'm going to be testing this, to me, new technology, which is the high voltage or graphene type LiPo. So I feel that a bit of additional safety won't go amiss. The default setting for the temperature cutoff is 50 degrees C, which seems reasonable to me here. It's summertime, so the ambient temperature is some 31 degrees. A 20 degree rise on that, I think, would indicate that there's an issue with the charging. So let's start the charge now. You can see it charging away, it's 1.6 amps. To simulate the temperature rise, I'm just going to heat this up with uh, an old hairdryer. And there we can see that the over temperature condition has been met and the charge has been terminated. Let's move on now and take a look at the battery measurement functions. A really useful function of this charger is the internal resistance measurement. We find that by going up in the menu to battery resistance. And here we can see 7 milliohms per cell and the same across the board. So that is an excellent result for this particular battery. We don't want to be seeing variations in the individual cell resistances. Clearly, total resistance is some 28 milliohms. If we contrast that with a battery which I know to be deficient, this particular three cell pack has shown to be much weaker than its counterparts. And here we can clearly see 30 milliohms across the board making a total of some 91 milliohms. Now clearly the higher internal resistance will limit the maximum current that can be drawn from this pack. It's still a useful pack for uh, light duties, but uh, for flying, certainly not. If we compare that reading against another battery of the same type and make that was actually purchased at the same time, we can see that it's approximately half the internal resistance. It's still not as good as the first pack. Clearly, you'll be able to draw a lot more power from this guy with a total internal resistance of 37 milliohms against 90 milliohms. This function clearly enables you to weed out the weaker cells. Better to discover that on the ground here than when you've just taken off and your plane dives into the dirt. The battery meter function is quite basic. It just tells us the individual cell voltages and then gives us the total voltage for the pack and the highest and the lowest voltage. The main use for this, I think, is deciding whether your battery needs balancing or not. If you see a wide disparity in the values there, say more than 0 0.02 volts or 2 to 3 millivolt, as we indicate here, the lowest 4.14 and the highest 4.17 would indicate that perhaps this is a candidate for balancing. It's not terribly out of balance. Balancing is always a good idea if you're in doubt. Finally, let's take a closer look at the DC power supply output. What could we use this for? In the SkyRC description it shows you possibly using a, an LED inspection lamp or maybe if you're into car racing uh, the tire, tire warmers that you use. In the manual it shows a fan so maybe you could cool off some, some batteries or something. There is an LED on the side that indicates the amount of power loading according to the amount of power that you're going to share between the external device and the charger itself. And as we saw, it's in fact possible to share 100% to the output and leave nothing for the charger, which I find a little bizarre. But the DC output is adjustable from, from 10 to 80, 80 watts at the output voltage of 13.8 volts. In my case, I recently reviewed this other SkyRC charger. Now this is ideal for, for field use, being powered by a, a battery and just having the XT 60 output there. Uh, if you want to see the full review, there's a link up there. Let's say, for example, I still have my 1600 battery here, and let's say I want to charge this 1300 battery on this charger here. How much power would I need? Well, this is a two cell 7.4 volt, and if we said 1C, that's 1.3 amps. 
which gives us 9.62 watts. So if we set the output here for 10 watts, we should be good to go. So that's very simple to do. So now we've got 10 watts coming out the power supply and 70 watts left, which is more than enough for this battery here. I should also mention that there are 10 battery memory locations available. Rather than having to set all the parameters for a particular battery that you have each time, you can just store it in the memory position. I've made up this little lead to power the other charger. So what's happened is that you can see the flashing red indicator here, which means that the output is overloaded. So clearly we're going to need more headroom to power this. Let's go back. Let's make it 15 watts. It seems to be happily charging there. Let's start this battery charging. So things are happy. This is charging at 1.6 amps and 1.3 amps there. Quite a useful feature, I think you'll agree. In summary then, I think this is a, an excellent upgrade on the original B6 unit. The extra facilities uh, for me, especially the internal resistance measurement, I will find very, very useful. My thanks go to Banggood for supplying this unit for evaluation, and I think it's going to be my go-to charger from now on.